What's up everyone, my name is Joe and this is Different Take. If this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe. Remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of 1BR and let me know a movie that has to deal with, hmm, let me know a horror movie that has to deal with cults. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, I was gonna do apartments, but there's not that many. Give me a cult movie. This movie at face value seems one dimensional, but it's not. It's thought provoking and it's deeper than that. It gets into how people get involved with like cults and religion and any sort of organized group or organized community. Scary thing to think about is what the hell is the difference between this and regular society? You got prison, you got religion, you got all these things that control aspects of your life. It's kind of scary if you think about it. This is essentially how controlling people control people. You ever see the R. Kelly documentary on Netflix and a couple other documentaries? It's scary in that sense. And this movie stuck with me after I saw it, but it has a message and the message is take control of your life. Don't let anyone tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing. Just take the bull by the horns and own it. Let's talk about the main character, Sarah, real quick. Sarah's dad is kind of controlling. She doesn't have a great relationship with him and you can see how that affects her as an adult. She's apprehensive, she's tentative, she's dependent on certain things. She lets other people boss her around and she's not much of a fighter. She doesn't stand up for herself. The movie opens up and we see some scenes of nice people talking and hanging out. It looks like an ad for like Valtrex or something. Talk to your doctor now about Valtrex. What's interesting about this opening montage scene thing is it has a completely different vibe after the first time you see this movie. It's just like, ugh. Eerie. So the movie opens up and it's in the LA area and we get introduced to Sarah and she's looking for an apartment. Little does she know that the apartment is looking for her. Hmm. When she walks into the open house and she sees all the people there that she has to compete with, she's like, oh, I'm not gonna get this. Uh, and she starts to walk away and jerk off Jerry. He notices that, you know he noticed that. And he was like, that's our winner. Hey, how you doing? Jerk off Jerry here. You look like you're unsure about yourself and that you have really no confidence whatsoever. Uh, yeah, you wanna join a cult? You don't really have a choice, so you're not gonna put much of a fight. Just come on in. We find out that she hates her job and her boss is an ass. And we meet Lisa, her coworker slash friend. Lisa's a little bit different than Sarah. Lisa's more of a fighter. She stands up for herself and stands up to her boss and she has some boundaries that she puts that Sarah does not. Everything seems fine and dandy until she can't sleep because there's like noises going on and the pipes are banging and nobody else seems to recognize the noise but her. She's getting anonymous threats about her pet cat. Hey, we got a pet in a horror movie. What's the over under if it's gonna survive? She can't refill her medication because of some issue going on. She don't know what's going on, but everything seems to be going. One night she gets woken in her sleep by her smoke alarm going off and we find Giles the cat in the oven. What? I'm more of a dog person, but I ain't gonna put a cat in the oven. That's messed up. Can we just stop putting pets in horror movies, please? Because they just never survive and it's just, it's not nice. It's not nice at all. She finds out there's a person in the apartment still there and we find out it's Brian. Sarah thought he was cool. We thought he was cool. Here it turns out he's a bag of dicks and she goes to escape. She runs out. She runs into one of the neighbors. It turns out that eh, they're in on it. They're all in on it. All of a sudden, boom, fade to black. Here we go. This is where stuff starts getting crazy. Sarah wakes up alone in a room that is eerily reminiscent of like a jail cell. Everything from the lights to the buzzing sound, security cameras, a squeaky ass door, even that the thing that she's wearing. Later on, they even say something like reintroduction into society. Hmm. Essentially conform, obey. No. Jerry tells Sarah that, what do you mean? Yeah, you quit your job. You close your bank accounts, your credit cards. You cut ties with a few people who actually might care that you're gone. So it's like you don't even have a choice. You have to depend on the community then. So what the hell's the point of the community? Bag of dicks, I mean, Brian, tells her to put her hands on the wall and he's gonna nail her hands to the wall. This, first of all, I wanna punch the dude right in the face, number one. Number two, nails through the palm of the hand onto the wall. It's fairly obvious if you haven't gotten it, but you know, if you're a Catholic, you, you know what the deal is. If that's not a little commentary note to religion, I don't know what is. So they break you mentally and then they break you physically and they get you into this little receptive state where then they put their little weird shit in there and then you start to follow it because you got nothing else. So you're taking people who are dependent on things, but then you're making them dependent on the community. So either way, it's dependency. 
Either way you shake it, it's dependency. So what the hell's the difference? I call bullshit. And honestly, if your product has to rely on that, then maybe you don't have that good of a product. Jerry goes up to her, puts his hand on her arm. It's weird. There's like a couple of things that jerk off Jerry does. You can even tell that Sarah's reaction is like, eh, dude, what the, don't, what are you doing? Don't touch, what? Bad touch, bad touch. So Jerry and Brian bring in the super secret weapon. On a chanteur. To come in and try to get Sarah to sort of conform and obey. Crazy is poisoning yourself with alcohol and pills. That's the greatest thing ever. After Sarah is finally broken, spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever, Jerry comes in, gives her a hug, it's weird, and he says, well done, proud of you. And if you look at her, she's like, oh, it's like she hasn't heard that because her dad's a dick. And this is what happens when, if your parents and you don't pat your kids on the back once in a while and tell them they're doing a good job, they're gonna be all up. They're gonna be messed up. They're gonna be sitting there like, yeah, oh, nobody likes me. I'm never doing a good job. Yeah, you are doing a good job. Your parents would just have the ability to actually tell you, but they're so insecure about themselves that they can't do it. <sighs> and Sarah is just, in such a receptive state, she's just completely broken. She's just like, oh, this is nice. Somebody telling me I'm doing a good job, finally. No. Ah. He's manipulating you. Then comes the reintroduction into society. It's start asking her questions and stuff, and like sexual preference. <laughs> well, what? Why? Why does that matter? Oh, that's right, because apparently they're playing matchmaker. So they ask her a sexual preference, and then they say, what's your first sexual experience? Bro, that ain't your business. You might want to keep it A. Hey, Yo, what's your first sexual experience, huh, Jerry? How about that? Catch me outside, how about that? And then Jerry says, openness is one of the foundations of the community. We don't keep secrets. Bullshit. Jerry says to Sarah, remember what it's like out there. Everyone in their own separate world, on their little devices, obsessed with themselves. We have to be better than that. Mmm. Interesting commentary on today's society and how we are with stuff. Can't say they're wrong. So we find out the four foundations and the four foundations are selflessness, which you act in the best interest of the community, not yourself. It has to be a balance, but whatever, that's just me. Then there's openness. Secrets breed discord, apparently. But then the community has their own secrets. Then you have acceptance, which once an error has been corrected, you're already forgiven. But if you have acceptance in the first place, that means you're accepting people for who they are. You're not trying to change them or slap them in the face for what they're doing wrong because you're telling them they're doing something wrong. Could you not? But you... <sighs> this community is really, really confusing. Then you got the last one, security. He says, we're our best selves when we know our neighbors are watching. Sarah tells Brian and Jerry about her history with her dad and her mom. Then we see kids in the school with a little video of Charles Ellerby and this interview. Charles Ellerby's like, Modern society is sick, it's selfish. Uh, modern society is sick, but you, what you're doing isn't sick. Nailing people's hands to a wall, putting cats in ovens, isolating them from their friends and family, that's not sick. But modern society is sick. Really? That's stupid. That don't make no sense. Look, I'm not comparing or making assumptions, but I was raised Catholic. I wouldn't say I'm Catholic now. I'm Catholic-like. I don't even know anymore. I don't really know what's going on. That looked eerily familiar to me. I was like, ah, oh, wait a minute. I know what that is. I'm not saying that the Catholic religion is a cult. I'm not saying that, but there was some eerie similarities. You're watching, essentially, things over and over again. It becomes routine and normal. And you start thinking that everything that you learned, everything that you know, that's normal. Everything else, is wrong and weird and not normal. That's crazy. You grow up sitting there thinking like, oh yeah, what are you talking about? There's a sky wizard up there looking down at all of us. He knows everything that we do. All these different stories, burning bushes, arcs, all that sort of things. But, uh, what? Don't question it though. Don't question it or you'll get spanked. You're gonna get hit with the ruler. And then you grow up to be an adult and then you're just like, Hail Mary, full of grace. Our Father, who art in heaven, everything's normal. And someone else comes along with another religion and it's like, get out of here, weirdo, with your weird religion. Uh, so your sky wizard's good, but, but our sky wizard is weird. Okay. Two things I can't stand in this world. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. 
But so these living foundations that they have, these four foundations, they become a habit and then it becomes who we are, which isn't that far off from every other religion, cult, organization, community, whatever. Have you seen the people out there with the picket signs and God is our only true savior? Repent. Rabble, 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 rabble. The guard Eh, very similar. And they say the world becomes a single perfect community, free of loneliness, free of poverty, free of strife. Yeah, and also free of choice. <sighs> when Sarah's chopping the vegetables, she looks at the knife and she's like, Whoa. and Lester sees her and Lester's like, no, there's a number. we're being watched, what are you doing? So you're starting to see that Sarah really doesn't want to be there completely. Jerry says, do you want to be part of the community? And Sarah says, I don't know. What's important was she was being honest. And that's when they decide, okay, you're ready for more responsibility. If you notice in the security room when Sarah's in there with a bag of dicks, Brian looks up, she sees a security camera and she's like, who's watching us? And Brian just gives her this intense look and is just like, none of our business, shut up, God. Hey, what happened to those secrets, dick bag? What the f***, Edie, whatever her name is. She gets sick and she can't contribute to the community anymore. So when that happens, they're just like, it's like, okay, that's how this is working. You're all important to the community until you can't contribute anymore. And then you're uh, basically expendable. How does that work? Brian's sitting there talking to Sarah and he explains to her that he's ex-military and he was a mess when he came back from Iraq. And when you let go and you accept the community, it really uh, blah, 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 blah. He's still a bag of dicks, it doesn't matter. So they ask Sarah again, you want to be part of the community? And she says, finally, yes. They look over at the lie detector thing. They're like, okay, she's telling the truth. And they finally let her back into the community. And what do you get to celebrate after all this crap? And you're sitting there and you finally go, okay, I want to be a part of it. And you're part of the team. You're part of the community. You get branded behind your ear. What? And look at her face. She is completely terrified. She does not want to do this whatsoever. There's something religious about this as well with the whole purified with fire kind of deal going on. And then you get the real Shamalama Ding Dong when Jerry's like, hey, Sarah, have you met Lester? What? So wait, they have fixed marriages? Now, unfortunately, this is all too real because there are cultures out there who still do have fixed marriages, set up marriages. It's still a thing. It's 2020. What? what? Uh, everything is all fine and dandy until, whoop. What do you know, when she least expects it or wants it, her dad shows up. Oh, good, perfect timing. But if you think about it, he actually gives a shit. He cares. So that's a positive. Now, what's heartbreaking about this scene is that she really does want to talk to her dad and really does listen to him when he says what he says. And everything that he says is really meaningful to her. You can tell in Sarah's face that she's really hearing what she always wanted to hear from her dad. And her dad is finally trying to connect with her. And it sucks because she essentially has to really piss her dad off and say some real mean stuff to him just to save his life. And he doesn't even know. It. It's it's kind of shitty. During a conversation with Sarah and Bag of Dicks Brian, he says, he must have seen, Jerry, must have seen hundreds of candidates before he met you, meaning Sarah. He says, wish you could help them all someday. Help all of who? All of what? Who? What? Then we find out that they're trying to get somebody new into the community, and it's Sarah's ex-friend, ex-co-worker, Lisa. They say we can save her from her empty, selfish life. So you know it's empty. Just like that. Why? Because she's single and works. So automatically, I'm going to punch her in the first jury. Jury! Sarah warns him. She's like, hey, she's not like me. She's strong. So Sarah is essentially aware of her own weaknesses. Interesting. The reason why it didn't work with Lisa is because, yeah, she's by herself and everything, but she's a fighter. This community, cult, whatever, they don't anticipate people who are by themselves to be in control of their lives, to be fighters. Well, Jerry, I wouldn't assume it makes an ass out of you and me, but they're trying to convert Lisa. It's not working. They send Sarah in there and Sarah's like, hey, look, <laughs> You're a 38 year old office worker. You really think you're going to be an actress? Ooh. Mm, look, Sarah, just because you can't achieve your dreams and you want to be complacent and you want to conform to what's going on, doesn't mean that you should be telling people that they can't do what they want to do. Sarah's like, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, no. And Lisa's like, what? You don't look happy. You look terrified. Sarah's like, I finally have a family. 
No, you don't. Lisa's like, no, you got a new daddy to run your life. Ooh, burn. Jumping Jerry. Flash comes back in. Sarah turns on Jerry. They run out. Lisa gets shot from behind by jerk off Jerry. She just storms Jerry, just kills him, stabs him to death. She's trying to escape. She's in the courtyard or whatever, and the community is all there. And she's like, I killed him. Let's go. Sarah's shocked when she realizes that essentially the community doesn't want to leave. They're just content with being there under the cult. Brian is sitting there like, yeah, you're not gonna do nothing, so why don't you just stay in the community? And I love that because Sarah's just like, you know what, the hell with this, and just boom, shoots him out of nowhere, kills the bag of dicks. She gets stopped by the community at the door, but then one eye Willie Lester helps her. He's looking at her like, don't, don't help me, just go, 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 go. It's interesting that the people in the cult are looking like zombies the walking dead, clawing at Lester, trying to get him in. Nice little subtle commentary there. So Sarah escapes the apartment complex. She looks next door and she sees a logo on the little sign. And the logo is similar to what the cult brands on people behind their ear. All of a sudden, the alarm goes off in the building next door. All down the street, all the buildings alarms start going off. And then she sees the logo on all of the signs for all the apartment buildings. She realizes that they're all under the influence of Charles Ellerby. This is bigger than just the building and it has, there's more influence everywhere. Mm. But instead of Sarah getting scared, she starts laughing deliriously and clenches her fist and just starts to run. I was running. Essentially, Sarah is tired of not fighting. She's tired of not standing up for herself. She's essentially not the same person as she was. She's a changed person. Going through what she went through and then coming out on the other side, you see things in a different light. It's like your eyes are open now and she's not going to put up with anybody's shit anymore. She's not going to put up with anybody bossing around, pushing her around. She's actually going to put up a fight. Okay, that's my explanation of 1BR. If you liked it or if you didn't like it, let me do it down in the comments. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty unsettling. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.